Y'all ready to rock? Yes, sir. All right. That's the law and the testimony. Let's deal with the so-called curse words. Y'all ready? Yes, I need to put this out here and to deal with this for all these wicked people out here who fantasize themselves to be my judge. I should have said fancy myself. Fancy themselves to be my judge and trying to find fault. You get it? And use it as an excuse to not live their lives in obedience to Yah's words. See, most people, if they're not fitting, if they're not, the word's being preached. I'm not the measuring stick, the word is. And you hear the word preached, the first thing you do is look for something to justify your little wicked way. So the first thing you do is look at something to be offended, thereby causing you to be disobedient. Rather than more obedient to what the word says. So you look for what you call an offense. Just so you don't obey the word. America's clean mouths and filthy lies have made people a bunch of hypocrites. Curse words. Let's deal with it, all right? And we're going to go from the secular sources and their definitions of them, okay? All right? Profanity. The quality of state of being profane. And utterance of what? Profane language. Well, we're going to use the word profane to, to describe profane. We didn't know what profane is, right? Profane to treat something sacred with abuse, reverence, or what? Contempt. To desecrate, to debase by wrong, by wrong, unworthy, or vulgar use. Now, to me, these two statements or these two words are diametrically opposed already. Because profanity, if you're going to describe profanity, I'm looking at how you describe profanity. But according to my mindset and everybody else's mindset, man, wait a minute, I'm looking for a cuss word. Or what we call a curse word. They're describing the intent. I said they are describing the intent to treat something sacred. With abuse. You hear that? You hear that? Biblically, they on point. But you don't know that. Because all you know is a cuss word. So let's see what the scriptures say about being profane. Y'all ready? Alright. Why equal 22, 32. Neither shall ye profane my holy name. And you think saying God damn is profaning his holy name. But he said, but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel. I am Yahweh, which what? Hallow you. Now notice, you neither shall you profane my holy name. Y'all getting that? So do these people who accuse me of profanity care one bit about profaning his holy name? Nope, not at all. But he do care about how you sound according to their mind. Let's get one more. Leviticus 20, verse 23. Two more. I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people because he have given of his seed unto what? Molech to defile my what? And to what? Profane my holy name. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Right here, the Most High is saying, because you didn't set your children apart to serve me like they're supposed to, but you've given them to an idol. You have profaned my holy name. Utterly amazing, isn't it? Leviticus 19, 12. And you shall not swear by my what? Name falsely, neither shall thou profane the name of who? Yah, I am Yahweh. What? Falsely. Yeah, lying. All this is getting somewhere because in the Hebrew, this word profane is to bore, to wound, to dissolve, to break one's word. Y'all do that all the time. See, the way you live and the way you function in life is more of a curse and more profane than saying damn hell and shit. See, 
what you do, what you need to do is get off your ass. You know what ass is, right? It's the ass end of a ship. Oh, boy. Also, a donkey is described as an ass. To defile the corrupt pipe player instrument flute. So everybody up here to play flights and endless. You're, you're profane too? <laughs> Jeremiah 23, 11 says, For both the prophet and the priest are what? Profane. profane. That word in Hebrew means they are corrupt. How many of you are corrupt? <laughs> Yea, in my house I have found their wickedness, say of Yahweh. 1 Samuel 1, verse... I mean, 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 30. Y'all ready? Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan. And he said unto him, Thou son of the perverse, rebellious woman. Do not I know that thou hast chosen the son of Jesse to thy own confusion and unto the confusion of thy mother's nakedness? Did Saul throw a javelin and try to kill David? Yeah. Where y'all get that from? You didn't learn that from here. You ain't going to read that in the book. Saul threw the javelin at his own son. <laughs> Go read it again. Matter of fact, we, we don't stop. Showstopper. Bro, saying, 1 Samuel chapter 20. We're going to get it because I see it now. We're going to hit blank street. We're going to hit blank street. Here we go. Recover time. Recover time. Let me turn over here. Where my bifocus at? That sounds good when you say bifocus. All dirty and rusty. You can't even see nothing, man. First time, we're going to stop for a second, all right? All right. Y'all ready? Oh, we well, on verse 30, right? Hmm. All right, I'm going to start. I'm going to read the rest of this, okay? We already read it. We're going to read verse 31 on down. For as long as the son of Jesse liveth upon the ground, thou shalt not be established, nor thy kingdom. Wherefore, now send to fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered, Saul his father, and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What have he done? And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him. Whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined of his father to slay David. So Saul cast the javelin at Jonathan. Is that right? I know that, man. We in context over here. Y'all hear that? The lies think he's slick. Where are we in context at? What I asked the question in context of? This one, right? You would have never even thought that Saul even threw a javelin at Jonathan if I didn't tell you. And you read the book all the time. You would have thought only David. Somebody tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. You would have thought there ain't no way he threw a javelin at his own son. What have you thrown at your children when you, they get mad at you? You get mad enough. All you holy, sanctified people. All I did was just give you something a little bit more to go on. You didn't know. Now you know. Now you got something to catch a Christian on now. Oh, never mind. Let me go on before we get too confused in here, all right? Y'all's not the author of confusion. The translator would have us to believe this is a literal translation where we just got finished reading in 1 Samuel 20, chapter, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 30. English translators of many Bible translations seem to be beating around the bush. Hey, bro, Rich, how you pronounce this word right here? Y'all hear that? Colloquialism is a word or phrase that is not formal or literary. Typically, 
one used in an ordinary or familiar conversation. In other words, what Saul said in Hebrew is what we would consider very vulgar today. This is what he said in Hebrew, and I can't read it, but I did get the translation. You stupid son of a bitch. Now, you don't believe me? You know what I'm going to tell you to do, don't you? Go check it out. That's called literal translation. That ain't called dressing it up to make your mind feel good because you're in a wicked English society that, that praises homosexuality. See, that's curse. That's a cursed people right there. That's cursing greater than damn hell and shit. This is crazy. It's crazy what you Jesus insulted people all the time. It's just that you dress things up. Luke 13, 31. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that. You think about a little bit of animal. Y'all hear that? Go and tell that fox, behold, I cast out devils. We do that. You say you believe and you don't do it. And I do care, cares today and tomorrow, and on the third day I shall be perfected. Now, does this sound like such a bad thing in modern English? But in the Hebrew culture, that was an unforgivable insult. That was considered a curse word. Jesus called things as he saw them, not like many of you hypocrites today. What Jesus said to Herod was, is that he was a crafty dog of a coward. Now that would piss people off. One more for your sensitive ears. Philippians 3.8. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. I do count them but dumb that I may win Christ. Some translators like refuse and rubbish in today's idiom, crap. Translation, really? Yet doubts I count all things but loss actually the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord for whom I suffer loss of all things and I do count them but shit that I may win Christ. The Bible uses stuff and it describes an adult male as one who pisses against the wall. It uses modern day Bible euphemisms such as one shitting or covering their feet. That's the literal euphemism. Wake up. See, when you use words, any words, with the intent to curse or harm someone, you have pronounced a curse. Maybe you can understand now what the Bible says when it says bless and curse not. See, you should not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Now, this is how you curse, and this is how you take his name in vain. And Christians do it every single week. They live in practice of it. Proverbs 30 verse 7. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. And give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food for convenient. Uh, feed me with convenient for. Feed me with food convenient for me. Lest I be what? Full and deny thee. And saith. Who is? That's what many of you got a problem with in this world. You got so much food in your damn belly that you can't even serve him. You can't even obey him. You're at ease in Zion. Lest I be poor and steal. Well, where you get the stealing from? You shall not steal. And take the name 
of my Yah in vain. So if you break the commandments, you have already took his name in vain. Well, well, well. Isn't that something? Accuse not a servant unto his master. What? Thou shalt not bear false witness? Lest he curse thee and you be found guilty. See, enough with your, I'm talking about these people out here. Enough with your wicked so-called judgment. Clean your damn lives up. Now, on YouTube, I actually went through a few curse words itself and defined them. But on here, we kept it nice and clean for you sensitive ears. Now, mind you, I'm the one preacher that's been filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit for 25 years. Heal the sick, cast out devils. I've actually even brought somebody back from the dead. Now, I realize I'm not the one that's doing all this. I know that there's a power inside that does all that. And you're going to bust my hoospa for saying damn hell and ass. This is off the chain. The majority of the cuss words with exception of ship height and transit I use because they're in the book. Bastard, hell, damn. I can't take this. No, but you can break his commandments every week and you're just fine. You're at peace all week long, ain't you? You can get on that telephone and slander your brother and sister and you just fine as on that. And the Holy Spirit don't never convict you. But as soon as somebody say, hell, you done lost it. That's bad. See, when the children hear it here, they'll go, Mama, what does that mean? Mama says, shut up, boy, I'll tell you when you're out of church. Then they tell them what the meaning of it is. So if they hear it from another source, they'll know that ain't the meaning. Christianity sure have made y'all full of religion, though, ain't it? 